Hi guys and welcome to a video on how to get the best render settings in Sony Vegas. This will really help you if you are using Shadowplay or DxTory or some other recording software and then you're finding it a bit difficult to get the quality reproduced when you put it up onto YouTube. That short little battlefield clip was actually using this guide to create the quality and obviously it has then been put back into a video and rendered back out again. So the first thing you want to do is open up Sony Vegas. Once you've done that, click on the little project properties tab that I've just highlighted on the screen there. Then you can copy all of the settings that I have on screen now. You can pause it and copy it yourself. Make sure you save the template as something memorable. At the top here as well, you can change the quality of your uh, project that you'll be able to view yourself. Now, just because the project quality on screen's changed, they're the two little settings that show you what quality you're using. Just because you've changed the quality on screen does not mean that you're gonna actually change the quality of the video itself. Just as long as the project thing below the video says 1920 by 1080, and then whatever frames per second you want, I go uh, 60 or 59.938 frames per second um, as I record in 60 FPS. Then what you want to do is find yourself your clip and drop it into either the project properties or onto the timeline itself. Then you can cut it and do what you want with it. Then once you've done that, the best thing to do is to save your project and just call it something like I have, just call it new save or test or something like that. Don't make the uh, the clip more than five or 10 seconds because otherwise you're just wasting time when it comes to rendering. Then what you do is you click render as. Now this is the bit that might take a little bit of time for you. What you wanna do is get rid of any favorites you've got and then you wanna scroll through and find video for windows in brackets star.avi. Once you've clicked on that, you can pretty much pick any of those ones there. I've got one that I've already customized, so I'll show you this one, but you can click on any of them and then click customize template. Then what you wanna do is copy the settings I have here and save the template as another test save or you know project one or something that you'll remember. Next up, you will have to download the H.264 codec. The link is in the description. It doesn't take a minute to download. Once you've done it, you might possibly have to restart Sony Vegas, but don't worry because you saved your project, as I mentioned earlier, so it's just a quick click and then you've got it back again. Then what you do is copy the settings that I've got on screen here. When you get to the video format part, scroll down and the bottom one, as you can see on screen now, is the one that you'll click. Once you've got that clicked, click on the configure button to the right hand side. Once again, you can copy the settings I have on screen now. These are ones that I've found from other people's tutorials on the internet. I've had a bit of a play with them myself and found that this is the actual best way for me to do it. It doesn't take too long to render, but you're still getting all of the quality. Now, the preset at the top left, slow, you can change that up if you're finding rendering is taking too long. But the slower down you go, the more quality that you're going to get. Although, bear in mind, if you go really low, you're going to take re a really long time to render. That goes the same for the, um, the little slider bar in the middle. Make sure that you keep the output set to what I've got on screen there and then all the little bars at the top as well. Profile set to high, level auto, convert to YUV and all the rest of it. You have to copy those, otherwise you'll find yourself not getting as good quality or it just not working properly. Remember to copy all the settings I've got on screen. You can pause the video if you need to, if I'm going through it too fast. And at the end of the video, I've also put in screenshots of all of my settings, so you can go through that as well if you don't manage to get it done or can't find it working. Once you've done that, you can save that as a, a favorite or click the little star next to it so you always know what it's gonna be called. You can cancel that before rendering because there's one or two other things you can actually do to make your video look even better. If you click the little video effects tab in the bottom right hand corner of the video or the one on the actual tab itself, you can then choose your plugins. So if you go for Sony Color Curves, click Add, Sony Color Corrector and click Add and then scroll all the way to the right hand side and find Sony Sharpen and click Add. These are the three that I use on pretty much any video myself. I've already created a profile for all of them, called it Test One just for the sake of this tutorial and then you see I've made other ones for when I've been making videos and needed to have the same color curve over them. So if you copy what I've got on screen if you want exactly what I've got, I do change it up depending on what video it is, but you'll be able to tell in your little viewing window on the right hand side, you'll be able to see it all change. Bear in mind, if you haven't got that on full, best full quality, you're not gonna see the actual effects until you render it out. On Color Corrector, there are two things you need to change. It is the mid part, the central circle is the one that I change, and I usually move it very, very slightly depending on how much color is on the screen. So at the minute, it's quite a blue screen, so I could change it down to just have a little bit more blue and let the let the water show a little bit more. If I was playing on like Silk Road, I might move it up to the left a little bit just to let the uh, let the sand be a bit more prominent. But it's really up to you, play around with it how you like. Some people just like to leave it in the middle and then the second thing you do is go to the saturation at the bottom and change that to about 1.1 
you can go for 1.2 but I wouldn't recommend going any higher than that. Some people just like to leave that alone as well because it does make the colours pop out a little bit more. I might not bring the natural colours back that were actually in game but I find it looks very good especially when you apply the uh, sharpen that we'll be doing next. Once you've gone on sharpen this is really up to you but you have to render it out to actually see the quality and see the changes because it's very difficult to notice them on screen it does look quite pixelated in a small window i tend to go for between 0.1 and 0.2 usually 0.15 is what i go for um, get a nice balance between the two of them once you've done that make sure they're all ticked at the top and then click cross now your video itself has had that done to it um, make sure that you've right clicked gone on properties and disabled resample and maintained aspect ratio you want to do this because your video will be choppy and it will apply motion blur that's what sony vegas does not sure why it does it but it's terrible for gaming then you go on file render as take your favorite rendered setting like we did before and then just let it render also make sure that you actually highlight the video that you're going to render as you can see i've done that just above the video there are the two yellow little dots that you drag across and highlight that and then when you go onto your render as settings make sure you click render loop region only that way you're only going to render the small part of the video that you want to it's very good if you just want to test it as you can see on screen that is me running what i've rendered in video player it'll work on any game it's working on gta in the background now you can do a lot of stuff with this you can make your video seem a lot more shiny a lot more realistic sometimes you can overdo it so be careful but i find that you get a lot more quality when you upload it to youtube hope this guide helps you in the background of those little screenshots i'll see you guys in the next video